made up time. If it has, it's made up time. It's supposed to be running half an hour late. They are five to one, they are, you see. I told you it was half an hour late. service to Liverpool by straight. 
following this story you'll know that it hasn't been the easiest one. It's been 10 years that um, we've been restoring this locomotive and even just in the last few months getting ready for today there's been some incredibly hard work. The, the guys you see here have been working unbelievable hours um, over Christmas uh, all, and, and, and all through the weekends just to get us here today. Um, So I want to say thank you to a few of those in particular. To all the team at Riley and Sons who've done the engineering on the engine. To all our, uh, all the team here at the museum, the rail operations team, our workshop, and the team who've put together all the events here today. Um, to people like, to D.B. Schenker who operated the train up from London today at very short notice. So everyone at Network Rail have pulled all kinds of strings and made things happen that are not really very easy when you're running a, 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 a nearly 100 year old steam locomotive on the busiest railway in the country. Uh, to Virgin Trains East Coast who've helped with all that kind of stuff, the Office of Road and Rail, the Rail Safety and Standards Board. Without all those people working away behind the scenes we wouldn't have been able to see the fantastic sight that, that, that we've seen today. So I think they all deserve a round of applause as well. So it's been hard work, but the thing, the only thing I can find myself thinking here today was, God, wasn't it worth it? Yeah. Seeing it steaming back up the East Coast Main Line today really was a magnificent sight. And, and for those of you who weren't on the train, the, the most amazing thing were the crowds. The crowds were huge. There were tens of thousands of people, I would say, lining the line all the way up. Every school we went past, every kid waving at the train, and they're going to remember that for the rest of their lives. Really, really fantastic day. And it reminded us all uh, why we love the railways. And if you love the railways, if you love locomotives, you have to love Flying Scotsman. Because it is the locomotive. It's the most famous locomotive in the world. It's been world famous since its appearance at the British Empire Exhibition in 1924 as the great symbol of the latest British technological achievement. It was famous through the 20s and 30s when it was the flagship locomotive of the premier rail line in the world, the 10 o'clock service non-stop from London to Edinburgh, kind of almost like the Concorde of its day, glamour personified. And it's famous for becoming the icon of the preserve, of preserved steam engines, touring the world in the years after steam trains went out of service. And now, just famous for being a national treasure, the steam locomotive everyone is able to, na to name. 
So that, for me, that's why today is so important. The world's most famous locomotive is running again, and that's a fantastic thing to be able to see. So we like to say Flying Scotsman's the people's engine, and that's reflected not just in all the tens of thousands of people we saw lining the route today, but also in the support that we've had for buying and restoring the locomotive. There's been over 9,000 individual people who, who, who donated to the Flying Scotsman over the years we've, we've been restoring it. And that's gone from six figure sums from the kind of people who are lucky enough to be able to make those kind of donations, through hundreds of people giving just two or three pounds a month in a standing order, and right through to a, a young guy called Zach who raised 600 pounds with a sponsored swim on his sixth birthday. Um, I think it just shows, as today has shown, the way that Flying Scotsman does really continue to capture the imagination of the nation. And of course there's been generous sponsorship from a, from a range of larger organisations and I'll just mention some of those quickly. The Eight Skull Group, Backman, First Trans Pennine Express, Great Rail Journeys, Porterbrook, Tata Steel, the Friends of the National Railway Museum, and also all the volunteers who've put in the huge amounts of work to make things happen here. Uh, Virgin, both in their initial purchase of the locomotive and the sponsorship that Virgin Trains East Coast are giving us for our Flying Scotsman season. But particularly, I'd like to sponsor the biggest donor, um, Peter Luff, standing here is the chip. Is the well, he's now the chairman of the Heritage Office Fund and the National Heritage Memorial Fund. And between them, they've contributed over two million pounds to the restoration and purchase of Flying Scotsman. So at this point, I'd like to hand over to Peter to say a few words. Paul, thank you very much. Uh, that's a great Western that. <laughs> there was something of an imposter in the LNER event, but I'm a very happy imposter on this great day for British engineering and for the city of York. Good, excellent. <laughs> Glad somebody did it. Uh, I was born and brought up in the shadow of Windsor Castle. My first memories are of college classes, tank engines, hauling the branch line train to Slough and his king class, king class decorators for the royal trains, and be the bully to merchant Pacifics standing in Waterloo. But it was the work of GWR's engineers, civil and mechanical, the Brunel, Gooch, Churchward and Collett, that inspired my passion for engineering. Indeed, it was one of Churchward's locomotives, City of Truro, the first... I think I'd better not finish that sentence today. It may be God's wonderful railway, but it's unarguably true that the two most famous locomotives of the 20th century were both designed by Sir Nigel Grizzly for the LNER. I remember standing here in 1988 in Orb, reunion of then the three surviving April Pacifics, Bitten, disguised I think as Silver Link, Sir Nigel Grizzly, and of course Mallard, the fastest steam locomotive in the world, on the 50th anniversary of her record-breaking run. But even despite the Hogwarts Express, a real-life GWR Hall class, by the way. The most famous of all is this, the Flying Scotsman. If one locomotive embodies, no, personifies, the nation's love affair with steam traction, it's this one. This glorious A1 Pacific, Nigel Gresley built both a great and beautiful beast of power and speed and a wonderful engineering memorial for the glory days of the nation's railways. That's why it's so appropriate that back in 2004, the National Heritage Memorial Fund stepped in with just over £1.8 million to help save the Scotsman for the nation. And that's why it was right for the Heritage Lottery Fund, to pull this up with a grant of £275,000, to help with the Scotsman for mainline operations, and to meet the challenge of interpreting this rich, rich heritage, this magnificent engineering icon, to ensure that future generations could marvel at her beauty and power, and I hope learn about the impact that locomotives like her had on our society and our economy, and best of all, to inspire a new generation of engineers. That's why as chair of both funds, I'm so pleased to be here today to celebrate with you the return of this renowned locomotive to active service at its home here at the National Railway Museum. The National Heritage Memorial Fund was set up in 1980 to save the most outstanding parts of our national heritage at risk. It does so as a memorial to those who gave their lives for our country. It's funded by an annual government grant, 
and is in that unique position by financial assistance to a wide range of heritage treasures for their acquisition, preservation, and maintenance. From great icons of engineering like this one, to works of art and wildlife havens, to important manuscripts. The preservation of the world's most famous steam locomotive is a perfect example of the value of the fund. The Heritage Lottery Fund, HLM, also supports a wide range of projects which I'm delighted to say seek to preserve, share and celebrate the wonderful heritage of British engineering. Thanks to national lottery players, HLM has been able to give over three and a half million pounds to this museum. We also have preserved over 90 steam locomotives and trams and in securing the future of many preserved lines. For the last 21 years, HLF has invested over a billion pounds, a billion, in the UK's unrivaled industrial, maritime and transport heritage. And every penny of that is thanks to national lottery players. Lottery players like me, and I hope you. Yeah? Good. I'm sure all of you would wish me to offer our warm congratulations and deep thanks, as Mary did, for everyone involved in this project. I'm delighted that both the memorial and lottery funds helped you to get the Flying Scotsman where she is today and where she belongs, on her very own main line and in steam, the People's Engine.